and they roll with a modifier that specifies a random ascendancy skill from one of the ascendancies of that class. If you are able to equip both a Forbidden Flame and a Forbidden Flesh Jewel that specify the same skill, and if you meet the class requirement, then you will be granted that ascendancy skill. <laughs> For example, what? if you're a Deadeye and find what? a Forbidden Flame Jewel that specifies the Welcome! It's your friendly neighborhood, Badger here, and I am back for another day of Siege of the Atlas talk. I am way too excited for this league, and that's probably because I took a really good break from Path of Exile. Maybe there's a lesson in that, but this new league is looking like one of the best expansions that we've had so far. Now, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the unique items teased so far, and most importantly, two specific jewels. Now, these two jewels are looking so ridiculously busted. More busted than Mage Blood, than Headhunter, in my opinion, in terms of what it can do to the game and what it can do to overall power level of a character. Now, these two jewels were teased in the actual live announcement itself, but I really want to explain exactly how they work and also probably how rare they're going to be, especially to get a pair that work well together. Now, what are these two jewels? It is Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh. These two prismatic jewels are jewels that do absolutely nothing by themselves. If you just socket one of these jewels into your passive skill tree, it is going to be giving you nothing. However, finding two of these jewels, one Forbidden Flame and one Forbidden Flesh, that both has the right class on it. For example, these ones right here requires class Ranger, requires class Ranger, and allocates a specific notable from any of the Ranger ascendancies. If you find two of these that have the same notable, you can put both of these into your tree, and then you have allocated, you, your character can use Master Surgeon. Now, as it says at the top there, it requires class Ranger, and there are going to be jewels for all of the classes, Scion confirmed. Now, doing a little bit of a count up, I've conservatively estimated, because I don't know exactly how many points Scion is actually going to be given, how many notables, I've conservatively estimated there's 135 different variations of this jewel, both of Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh. Now, what does this mean in terms of rarity? Well, Chris has said, I think his actual words were, these jewels will be very rare. Uh, and they will be from the endgame bosses, the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds. Now, these two bosses are probably not going to be dropping one of these every time you kill them because of what Chris said, they're very rare. They might because the bosses themselves might take a really long time to get to, but in my opinion, these are going to be anywhere from a 20 to 10% chance drop on these bosses. So what does that mean? This potentially means that it's going to take you 1,350, 1,350 attempts of each boss to get the specific jewel that you might want if you are hunting for a specific jewel. So say, for example, you're looking for the Master Surgeon on... Uh, a Forbidden Flesh right here, you may have to defeat, on average, 1,350 uh, bosses, which for any one character is almost impossible, especially if you couple it with two separate instances of 1,350 kills. So you've got to average, get an average drop of 1,350 kills here, if it's, you know, a 10% drop, and then another average 1,350 drop right here. If the gems dropped one gem per kill, or one jewel per kill, I should call them jewels, if they dropped one jewel per kill, the math turns out to be, you would, it would be a 1 in 18,225 chance that you would drop the jewel you want back to back from each boss. Uh, so, you know, that's going to happen to someone. Who knows who that's going to be? Maybe that's going to be you if you're up in the endgame. I'm sure that's going to happen to someone. A 1 in 18,225 chance to drop them back to back. Uh, but it's, you know, separate instances of 1 in 135 drops for each of the bosses right there. Not kills, drops, because we don't know the actual drop rate of this right here. Now, 
I've talked about the gem itself, I've talked about, you know, the rarity of it and how unlikely you are if you're playing SSF that you're ever going to be able to use this. But there is one exception for SSF. You will be able to use this if your Twitch handle name is Steel Mage. Um, there's something really weird with Steel Mage's client that, you know, th this sort of thing is kind of ripe for his discovery and he will probably find two profane blooms uh, and then run some sort of a cultist because, you know, it's... it's Steel Mage. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, the uh, Ascendancy points themselves because there's some really, really amazing combinations that can work. Now, just one more thing about this. Because of the requirement, you're not going to be able to get something like Profane Bloom from the Occultist on any other class. Say, for example, trying to get that on the Berserker, you're not going to be able to get that. You can only allocate, it will only roll, and you can only allocate points from the uh, class that you're playing. So if you roll a class of Witch, you're only gonna be able to roll any of these right here. But that still opens up so much play and, and room for experimentation here, granted that we actually get the jewels that we want. So for example, as I talked about, Profane Bloom, cursed enemies you or your minions kill have a 40% chance to explode. This is the one most people are talking about because it's just the best clear ascendancy point in the game just because of how versatile it is with any character that curses whatsoever in, in some sort of curse on hit setup. However, there's some other really big ones. Any of the Shaper nodes on Elementalist, so for example Shaper of Flames on uh, some sort of Ignite Occultist or Shaper of Winter on uh, an Occultist here as well, even Shaper of Storms for any sort of damaging build is really really nice. We can also have a uh, plus two to level of all minion skill gems on a Golemancer. So if you're an Elementalist and you're going Golems, you can get plus two to level of all minion skill gems. Or vice versa, if you're a Necromancer and you want to play Golems, you can pick up either Liege of the Primordial or Elementalist for the extra summon Golems and the extra buffs there as well. There's some really, really nice things with potentially going a Poison Trickster and being able to go crit with Toxic Delivery or vice versa. If you're going a Poison Assassin and picking up Prolonged Pain for just a bunch more damage right there as well. Uh, if you're going some sort of Trickster Miner or Trickster Trapper or Assassin Miner or Trapper, any of the Saboteur nodes are really nice. There's also the Master Toxicist from the Pathfinder giving your poisons proliferation, meaning that you can do any sort of poison uh, Deadeye or Poison Raider to a lot greater effect right there. There's some really crazy ones with the Slayer, or sorry, with the Duelist. Well, for example, Slayer Cull being used on Champion or Gladiator, or you've got the Gladiator clear with Gratuitous Violence, either on a Bleed Champion or a Bleed Slayer. And you can also even have Permanent Fortification on a Gladiator or Slayer. If you did get Permanent Fortification and managed to get this on a Gladiator, it'd be one of the tankiest things at the moment. It'd be very, very strong. You can then also be stacking so much defense on a Juggernaut, and then also pick up Aspect of Carnage to balance things out with your damage, which is really, really nice. Or you can pick up something like Defy Pain on a Juggernaut to be almost invincible. Uh, Chieftain, there's some really nice things, uh, if you're going any sort of, like, uh, Berserker that's doing some sort of fire damage or something like that, any sort of penetration, or Hinakura's Death Fury is really, really nice, or even if you're going a, uh, you know, a Totem, uh, Juggernaut or Berserker, you can pick up some Totem nodes there as well. Some really, really cool stuff with the Inquisitor, picking up, you know, Battle Mage for some Hierophant Totems and that sort of thing. Or uh, there's some interesting Guardian stuff that you could do with uh, totems as well. Uh, but, you know, th <laughs> this whole jewel, or I guess both of these jewels, is just ripe for excitement. Now, the downside to this jewel, it is going to be extremely rare, as I did talk about before. And what does that mean? Well, even for someone like myself, I don't know if I'm even going to be using these jewels gems, these jewels, in the new expansion. Depending on how much I play and depending on how much currency I accrue, I'm probably not going to be able to purchase the ones that I want, but I might be able to purchase some uh, lesser ascendancies, ascendancy points that, you know, I might be able to make some unique builds about. And that's what my entire league is going to be about. Very interesting, unique builds that I'm also just going to push through and try and try and do something with the end game. There's going to be at least one build, if all of my unique 
interesting, stupid builds don't play out well at all, I'm definitely going to do one sort of meta build so I can at least get through the end game. However, um, these jewels are really going to open up so much, even if it's just for our own uh, experimentation within our minds, our own theory crafting. Even if we don't get our hands on them, they're going to be really cool to see what people do with them. So I hope this video has been all right. Um, I didn't talk about any of the other uniques here, only about these jewels, but uh, I really think they need to be highlighted just because of how fun they seem. Let me know in the comments down below if you're a little worried about these jewels because, you know, you think you might never get them or they're too rare or something like that. But do remember, this is probably some of the biggest power creep that we've seen in a jewel like this before uh, since something like Watcher's Eyes, like a triple mod Watcher's Eye or something like that. So just remember that uh, because these really are going to break the game open like a Mage Blood or a Headhunter does. Um, thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed the content, remember, hit that sub button down below. I know I talk about it a lot, but I'm trying to get to 50k as soon as we can, and then we're shooting even higher because I've got some really cool content coming out for you. Got a Lightning Tendrils build idea. I've got a Fireball build idea. I've got an Explosive Trap build idea that I might bring out. We'll see. I think Explosive Trap is going to be, um, one of my more meta picks for the league. Uh... So yeah, thanks for watching everyone, and until next time, Badger is out.